Hiya folks, this has just come in with, uh, as an exchange mower. Uh, a bloke's taken one away and dropped this one off with a little bit of a cash difference as well. He said that he was using it and it started, it went bang and then it was chucking out a load of oil and petrol. We asked if he hit something and he sort of went, um, um not too sure, uh, well maybe, I'm not sure. And he said when he tried to start it again, it was kicking back. So we don't know what's happening. Let's have a look at it. Let's see what we think the problem is with it, whether we can salvage this engine and get this thing running again. I don't know yet, so let's have a look. Right, well, this is a McCulloch lawnmower. Uh, looking at the date on it, it's uh, 2018, so it's not actually very old. Let's have a closer look at it. First inspection, see what you think as well. Well, as you can probably see, there is some sort of leakage or something that's happened around this side. This is the carburetor side. I'm looking at it and it's looking very oily, to be honest with you. The carb's around this side, the oil fill is around the other side, and also the exhaust is around the other side as well. And there is some signs of oil around here as well as you can probably see there's the oil filler so my initial thoughts on looking at this is that possibly it's been overfilled or it's been tipped up the wrong way it's chucked out a load of oil i'm not sure it's all around the air filter there as you can see let's just take the cover off let's see what we can see underneath this well look at the amount of oil in there look that's pointing me to the feeling that it's probably been overfilled with oil so let's put that to one side we take the air filter out, which again is, look at that, look, saturated with oil. And the only reason you'll get oil in there is if it's been overfilled. So that's uh, showing that sort of symptoms. Let's just come around here to the other side and just undo the dipstick. As I say, you never know what a person is telling you is the truth or not. So we'll just take this out and have a look. We're not gonna need to wipe it down first, obviously, but uh, let's do that first. So I'll just, wipe it down so we've got a clean dry dipstick and we'll just put that back in but we will wind it in it's on a flat surface take it back out again and then we'll inspect definitely on the correct mark so to speak you probably can't see that but it is right okay so that's my first provisional check I'm now going to look underneath the deck to see if there's any sign of any damage to the blade. And initially, I'm just going to take that grass box off because I want to tip it back. So let's get that off first. It's very hard to tip these back when you've got the box on. Let's put that down there for a minute. Right, okay, so let's tip it back and see what we got back here. I'd like to bring it forward. Right. Let's pull that plug lead off first. I don't want it firing on me if I turn the blade over. Just take that off. Well, I can feel compression and I can also hear loads of oil coming out of the carb. Let me show you. Oil is absolutely pouring out of the carb right there, as you can see. So, look at that, look. That's not a good sign. So whether or not this has been turned up the wrong way, we shouldn't be getting oil in there, basically. So uh, that's not a very good sign, is it, so far? It's literally pouring out of that carb. I'm rotating the crank to see if it's bent at all. And the simple way of doing that... Now, the crank doesn't look bent, to be honest with you. It's the same sort of distance either side so I can't say that the crank is actually bent at this moment in time so I'm going to put that down for a minute but that doesn't rule out to say that it's actually kicked up something so what I'm going to have to do here to get to the bottom of this oil situation in the carb I'm going to take all the carb off anyway just to have a look it's going to have to be cleaned out obviously so I'll start by taking these two 10 mil bolts off right we've got our impact wrench here zoom these off you can never go by what people tell you you've got to work it out for yourself so let's put these up there there's going to be a 
vent hose on the back of there, which there is. Let's pull that forward, there we go. That's the back of that, that's the primer thing there, which was actually off. That should go on that little spout there, but that was actually off, so that wasn't working. You don't know whether, again, you don't know whether or not they've tried to have a look at this as well, you know what I mean? Right, there's stacks of oil in that carburetor is what I can see there. So, there's the fuel line. Just got my fuel clamp pliers there. Let's just uh, crimp that off there and pull that back like that. That just stops the fuel from flowing. Take that clip off. Pull that fuel pipe off. There we go. Stick that around there. All right, pull the carb forward. Got two little collets on there, as you can see. And also a gasket. Make sure you don't break that, because we're going to need to use that again. Right, just pull that forward. And you've got a governor spring. And also an arm on there. As you can see there, just leave that that way. That's pull out, which it does. And unhook your spring. Right, so that's the carb out of the way now, as you can see. We can just take that apart. Now I'm suspecting that, uh, this is the engine breather there, as you can see. I'm suspecting the oil's made its way into the carburetor by coming down that breather tube there, entering the air filter housing, which is backed up by the amount of oil, as you can see, that's where it plugs onto, by the amount of oil that's in here, and then it gets sucked into the carb. So that's the reason why I think we've got all that oil there. So normally when you get oil there, it's been tipped up the wrong way, the oil's traveled into there. And as a result of that, soaked, soaked the air filter, which we saw, and also, the uh, engine might have smoked and poured all oil out here because it's either been tipped up the wrong way or it's been overfilled. It don't look like it's been overfilled unless it's all come out now, but uh, it could have been tipped up the wrong way. So I don't know about you, but I don't like working in a mess. So I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes just to clean up this area here. And uh, then we'll start taking that carb apart, cleaning that out, and then we'll sort of go through this to find out if it has been tipped up. I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay, that's a bit better now. So let me just come over here. I just wanna, let's clamp that handle up first. So I'll take the brake off, hold on. We'll just clamp this handle up because I wanna take the brake off to just gently pull it over. I don't wanna go mad. Right, okay. Because I wanna just see if it pulls over okay. Now, can you feel that? It's tight, look. That's not pulling over, is it? Now, it could be hydro locked, I'm not sure. There's definitely too much pressure there, but that could be due to oil in the spark plug hole. So I'm gonna take the spark plug out. Is it 16 mil? That's the one. Let's get a drive on there, hold on. So we don't know whether it's hydro locked with oil, with the amount of oil it's had in there. So we'll soon know if we take the spark plug out and loads of oil comes out when we're trying to turn it over, we'll know if it's hydro locked or if it's a mechanical issue causing the piston not to be able to come up. And there's loads of oil on that plug. In fact, it's never going to spark because there's oil bead between the actual electrode. So there you go. So I'll put you there and I'll turn it over now to see if it will pull, which it does. And oh, I've just seen oil shoot out of there. Look at the amount of oil coming out of there. I don't know if you can see or not. So we give that a few pulls, just to push that oil out. Right, okay, so that's pushed quite a bit of oil out of there. Swimming, let me get some of that dabbed up there. So you can never go by what people tell you. That's why you've got to have your own systematic way of checking. Look, it's probably hydro locked. So let's clear that out of there. We'll just put the plug back in now. Again, I'm not worried about it firing or anything because uh, that plug's well oiled. I just want to see if we're able to turn it over now. Because it's way too much pressure. So let's have a little look here. Just wind that in. I will just nip it up because we don't want to lose any compression through the side of the plug. So that's that. Now before we couldn't pull the pull cord. Let's see if we can now. Right. 
There we go, look. We can pull that over now. So we couldn't do that before. That's what happens when you've got too much oil in the plug. What I'm quite tempted to do as well, just to check the valves on this as well, to make sure that we've uh, got the correct clearances. So I'm gonna take the valve cover off. So off with the four 10 mil bolts that hold the valve cover on. There we go. There's one more bolt at the bottom, look. Didn't see that. There's a fifth one there. I thought there was normally four. There you go. You learn something new every day. I mean, it would be ideal if we can salvage this mower because it's, a, I say, it's not very old. I don't want to break the gasket, you see. Here we go. Just unstick it from the bottom there. There we go. I've left the gasket in situ. So what I'm going to do now is just take the plug out again, find the top dead centre, and see what the valves are set at to see whether they're intolerant. So we just don't do that. This releases the compression, you see, by taking that out. And you'll probably see now when I pull it, it should pull over easy. There we go, look. So what I'll do is stick a screwdriver in here, turn the engine over gently with a pull cord, it comes down, and the screwdriver's coming up again. It's at the top of the travel now. If I just turn that blade, can you see, look, the valves are rocking. It's at the top, piston's at the top, but the valves are rocking. So we're gonna take it down again. The piston so it goes down. And then when it comes up again, that's the stroke we want, up to about there. Right, now you watch this. So when I turn the blade now, it's at the top and just on the top of going up and down, like that. So keep it in the middle. The screwdriver's just on the verge of going up and down again, but the valves ain't moving this time, you see. That's when you can adjust them or check the adjustment. So I'm gonna get the feeler gauges now, see what they are. Now, I haven't looked up the specification yet for these, but I will do in a minute, but we'll just see what the actual valves are set at. Now, on average, I think you'll find that valves normally are between four and eight foul. So the inlet is this one here on the inlet and the exhaust valve is the one on the exhaust side. So I've got a six foul feeler gauge here now. Six foul goes in okay on the inlet. On the exhaust, six foul goes in there as well. So that feels okay actually. So I'm gonna check the actual gap and then I'll get back to you. Right, well I've been online, I can't find any information in the manuals at all for McCulloch, but I've ascertained that most people set these at five fouls, so six fouls, not that far out. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm quite happy with that. Let's put this cover back on now. There we go, that's that cover back on. So we'll turn our attention to this oily carb. Uh, I'm not gonna go too mad with this, but first of all, what I'll do, I don't like to strip carbs down when they got all this rubbish around the outside of them. So what I tend to do is give them a good squirt with carb cleaner first, just to loosen up all that old crap on there. And now I've done that, I'll give that a good blow down now with the air compressor. So let me go and do that. Right, I'll just wipe this down as well. Again, with carbs, cleanliness is the only way to go if you're servicing a carb and you want it to run correctly. So just make sure everything's clean and tidy. And I think you'll see now that that carb is a lot better to handle. It's not spotless, it's not been through an ultrasonic cleaner, but there's less chance of me getting contamination on the inside. So all I'm gonna do now is just undo that. That's the old petrol coming out of there, as you can see, look. I don't mind that there. We use that because we can use that to clean with, if necessary. And all we're doing basically is just having a little check inside. I just want to make sure there's no oil residue that's gone inside it. Just undo that, our little 10 mil on the base of the float. There we go. There we go, just take that out. Now look at that, you can tell it's a new carb, look. Absolutely spotlessly clean. But as a matter of course, I will remove the float 
and this is a little needle valve on the back of that there as you can see this one's got a little rubber insert on it you probably can't see that but it has if it's got a rubber insert on there that means in the actual seating there won't be an o-ring if it hasn't got an o a, a rubber seal on there and it's a brass in there you're most likely to have a little o-ring and it's very easy to lose that when you're blowing out a carb not realizing then you get the carb flooding all the time so that's just something to be careful of in there as you know is the main jet i'm only interested in the main jet at the moment so i'm going to undo that but before i do that i want to just wipe around that edge there as you can see where all that rubbish is what the air gun didn't blow out i'm not disturbing the um o-ring as you can probably see i want that to stay in situ right okay so that's that right again good fitting screwdriver is essential when taking out jets there we go we're just removing this main jet there we go and the emulsion tube comes out as well so again we're just you can't see this but i can see that that jet is slightly blocked and the emulsion tube as well you've got these tiny holes around that let me hold that up to the light the emulsion tube is actually okay so i'm happy for that to stay there and i'm lucky enough to have some lovely subscribers who sent me some jet cleaning rods and i'll just get one of them and just stick it through there and there we go i'm happy with that so that's now clean i will give this a drop of carb spray again i'm this isn't going to be the issue here but this is just preventative in case there is some slight blockage and i'll blow that out with the air gun but be back in a second hold on all done and i've also blown the jets out and the emulsion tube as well which i'm now going to drop back in and the jet goes back in there like that again i don't think the carb was the issue on this as i say because uh this is just a preliminary check we're doing because we had to take the carb off just to make sure it won't full of oil and just a little nip up you ain't gotta go mad and that's it that's the carb cleaned as far as i need to go it was virtually you can see it's virtually done no work whatsoever so now i'll just put the needle back in drop the little pin in and also replace the uh the base and just nip that up by hand right okay then so that's ready to go back on Right, so we've got our little gasket on the back there to put on, so we might as well just slide that on first. Goes on that way. We've got our lever for our carburetor to go back on. For our governor, our little spring. Well, in fact, if I put the spring on first, and I can then put the uh, governor back on, governor arm lever like that and then just slide that carb into place like that everything's nice and clean as it should be i can replace the fuel line like that undo the clamp and slide the cable clip back over right i've also given this a clean off as well two things we've got to make sure we put back on is one for the primer bulb and also the hose for the uh, breather as well so Let's get that back on there. Before we do that, we need to put our gasket back on with our two collars, like that. Then we can mount that. Put the tubes on at the back. Get our two nuts to go on. I ain't tied them up quite yet. Just a little nip up. There we go. Right, I've cleaned the air filter as best I can. Right, let's put this in properly. We'll clip that on the front. There we go. I'll wipe that down. Again, we'll give it a good clean up once we've proved that it runs, but uh, I think that's ready for testing. <sighs> Right, we'll put the spark plug cap back on. 
like that. Let's get it outside and give it a try. Right, let's get it out here into the sunshine. Give it a few primes. We'll try it anyway. Right, okay. Unbelievable. You can probably see that it's belting out a load of smoke and there's a load of oil coming out of the exhaust as well. I personally think that's through it uh, being tipped up the wrong way or overfilled. Let's have a little look. It's going to need to run for a bit to burn that oil off. Let me get it running again. Hold on. You can probably hear me a lot better now, so I'm going to need to let that run off now just to burn that oil off that's gathered in the exhaust. But it looks like a good mower. Right, there we go. Uh, another scrap mower back on the road and it's only less than probably less than two years old so uh gary was going to get this in for parts but i thought because i'm here i might as well have a look at it and you found out what was wrong with it along with me anyway there we go i'll show you around it one more time and i'll see you later in the next video and until then bye for now